Welcome to the Dev Ready Podcast, where we're helping non-techs build better tech. Today, we have Andrew Bird joining us. He is the Director of Foundstone Advisory. Andrew, thanks for joining us. G'day, Andrew. G'day, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Another Andrew. Uh, there's plenty of those around. <laughs> there is. There is. <laughs> so, Andrew, tell us a bit about your background. I always love to dig in, get an understanding of who you are, and where you, where, how you eventually evolved into Foundstone. Yeah, sure. So Foundstone Advisory, we're an advisory around business strategy, but most of us have come out of the technology digital world. So inherently, we do a lot of work with organizations who are are working within the technology and digital space, which really now is a lot of organizations, isn't it? If an organization isn't considering what they're doing in that space, they're probably a bit behind the times. So myself personally, I came, you know, for for many a year, was involved in in technology consulting and digital consulting. So working for organizations, systems integrators, who were building applications, some some pretty large scale applications in the health and financial services space, cloud migrations, you know, technology architecture, and technology outsourcing. So over, over many years, I really saw how technology was changing from that on-premise build, perhaps, you know, 10 years ago to managing everything uh, on-premise, you know, custom development, to then fast forward to, you know, even sort of four or five years ago, I was involved with, you know, some of the the hyperscale cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft, and seeing the migration path to that hyperscale um, cloud environment. And what I saw personally was a shift in, or people really having to shift their mindsets from, you know, IT functions, IT departments, and digital functions from changing from really, you know, saying we're going to build this all ourselves to, to instead of that, taking a step back and saying, okay, what problem are we actually trying to solve here with this application or with this tech environment? And then really engaging more with the business and ideally with their end customers before they were going to invest or build any applications or infrastructure. So fast forward to now, Foundstone, you know, we work with organizations normally from, from ground up strategy. So we'll be working with the, the CEO or the leadership team or, or sometimes the board. And ideally, it's starting with a blank page strategy. So they might have had a strategy, business strategy that's a number of years old, or they might have a strategy that's perhaps in a glossy document, but not, not many people actually understand how it relates to them and the organization. So that's generally where we start. And inherently, technology and digital functions are a key part of that now. So a lot of the, our old relationships you know, my, in my past life is the heads of digital COOs. And they're trying to get their head around, you know, how they can better position tech and digital to solve problems. So we're we're doing a lot of work in that space. Are you finding, so from a strategy perspective, are you finding that strategy comes first or is technology considered to to enhance the strategy? Where does it sort of come in? When does tech conversation come about? Or is it just a problem that we're looking to automate? Where Where do you find it comes into the conversation? And how does technology really come up? That's probably the biggest question I've got here. Yeah, so it's a good good question, Andrew. I think I think looking back some years ago, perhaps you know technology was seen more of that just enabling role. Mm. You know, it was more around do we have the right infrastructure to serve our employees and staff and partners? To now, really, you know, digital and technology, as you guys well know in in, in your organisation, that if you're not looking at technology at how it's actually bettering a customer experience. Well, then probably we'd probably need to question, you know, why are we, you know, building or investing in that bit of technology? So I saw that shift from, you know, IT functions, you know, being measured around, you know, are we keeping the lights on? Are we, are we providing all the product productivity tools for staff to do their work? To now, you know, technology functions should be, and the broader business, looking at whatever they're investing in, how is that, you know, better enabling their staff to serve customers? Or how is it actually bettering the customer experience overall? So I do a shift in mindset is a big part of that, I think. And we're also seeing that you know the tech function is no longer just responsible for for digital and technology. It's you know it's marketing, it's customer teams, and if they're not thinking about how technology can be used to better the customer experience, you know there's probably some opportunities there. Mm. I think you mentioned customer experience probably about six or seven times in that conversation. Talk to talk to me about what a good customer experience means. We are as consumers, as everyone in a B two B component, 
we're exposed to so much technology these days that we we expect seamless experience. That's that's definitely one of the things that can turn people away from a business if they don't get that seamless experience or things are too archaic into the ways we deal with a business. So how do you find the experience of, a, of working with a business and how technology comes together and brings it to a consumer? How, does that, how can that impact a business in, in the long run in terms of where it might go, where it might lead to in the next two to three years? Yeah, so a lot of our conversations, Andrew, is really around, you know, we predominantly work in the, in the mid-market space. Yep. So if we're working with a with a CEO and a board, mm-hmm. to be honest, a lot of the conversations we're having are, are around is actually educating you know those pretty senior people around what technology really can do, what is the opportunity mm-hmm. for it and with it, but also what are some of the healthy limitations of it? Because what we're seeing, you know, boards and some execs they haven't come from a tech background, so digital and technology is probably a bit mystical to them. You know, us as consumers, you know, with our lives, we're becoming more more used to to dealing with technology, aren't we? Yeah, you see it every day. You've got a device that sits in our pocket that we can do basically anything on these days. That's uh, that's a right. World than it was ten years ago. It, yeah, it certainly is. So, so what we're seeing actually is it's really starting that conversation, having the, the CEO and the leadership team and the board really understand, you know, what, how can technology and digital actually enable the business? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of boards are perhaps, you know, they're, they're scared of actually having a conversation around technology at times mm-hmm. because they don't know really how it applies to governance and measurement and how it actually applies to growing the business. So firstly, it's a conversation when we're talking, you know, working with the CEO on their, on their business strategy. It's actually firstly around actually putting technology aside for a, for a moment and trying to, trying to get them into the headspace of, okay, let's go and have a conversation with our customer, with our community, the people we're trying to, trying to serve. And actually, you know, with a blank page approach, what are your customers? What is your market seeing? What are they hearing? What are some of their major, major challenges and problems? So trying to, to not, you know, have a have a product or a technology mindset that would drive a customer down a certain route, starting with that blank page conversation, which then really opens up the the principles around design thinking and human-centered design, which we use, to really understand, to help them understand what their customer is going through. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then we can look at, okay, how can technology and digital actually enable this experience? We, you know, your question at the start there, we do see there's a lot of momentum, good momentum around technology and digital in terms of how people wanting to roll it out. But we're seeing that perhaps even more and more, and I've heard both you and, you and Anthony talk to this, that let's actually work out, you know, what, what business problem or organisation or community problem we're trying to solve first. Once we, if we don't understand that, if we're trying to build tech without understanding that first, mm-hmm. I've seen over, you know, a, a fair few years that, that that can go off the rails. So I think that's really the first port of call, getting the, from a real business and an organization-wide strategy, getting a real good understanding of you know, what's really most important in our customer segment, and then having technology in the back of the mind of then how can that enable that better experience. We talked to this a bit, and you, you have mentioned it there. It's, in reality, building technology is the easy part. If yeah. you're, with, you're working with a, a good team, that has the experience to deliver technology. That is not the hard part. And in most cases, you might have a, an off-the-cuff sort of solution, which is a bit of AI, AI mixed with um, some data components, and it gets pretty complex and sophisticated. But if you're yeah. building business solutions, consumer-driven products, this stuff isn't as difficult as it sounds these days. We've evolved to a way where there's a lot of things that we can bring together as technology players to deliver solutions. There's off the shelf things that can be picked up, put together, integrate and deliver some really seamless product. That's the easy part. The hard part we've found in our experience is actually what you said there, solving the right problem, ensuring the customer is gonna use the, the piece of technology and ensuring it's actually gonna add value. If you don't do that up front and invest the time there, we've seen it too. We've seen and been a part of projects where we've invested time, customers invested money, um, built products, they sit on a shelf and don't go anywhere. And the reason why, no one was really interested. And uh, probably the reason that happened was because no one asked any questions to begin with. Yes. Um, came yes. out of the mind of one or two people and it went down a developer path, got delivered, and then thing got shown to the world and the world wasn't interested. So um, it's Yeah, it's true. But it's a tough one. It's like people don't like to share to the world, but we talk to startup founders, businesses, anyone alike. You're better off 
communicating what you're doing early on mm -hmm. and um, with the risk of <laughs> losing that idea or to somebody else building it. Yeah, they, all, is, they all approach yeah. you with an NDA yes. and they want to talk to anyone yes. that has a yeah. secretive. But yes. then that can yeah. be prohibitive from their end. They just don't realize it yet. Yeah, they don't understand yeah, it's that. true. And then, sharing yeah, the idea early on. Is the real probably... challenge is not just probably understanding what the mm -hmm. actual problem is and focusing mm -hmm. on your customer. It's changing their mindset that the technology isn't the be-all and end-all and no. the beginning mm -hmm. of anything. It's just yeah, I think tool it's, or the method to, of delivery, really. Yeah, I think it's refreshing coming from a from both yourselves as, as leading the organization that it's always it's mostly with good and pure intent, isn't it? That people mm -hmm. want want to, you know, get on and start rolling things out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's refreshing to hear that perspective because, you know, what I found probably learned probably four or five years ago is instead of technology organization just, you know, doing a really good job of rolling out a solution, if you take the time up front to actually bring the, all the people into the into a conversation, customers, partners, internal technology departments, into a conversation around what is the end game here? What are we trying to solve? It, it can seem to some people that you're slowing down the process. But what, what we've seen, and I know what, what you both see, is that by doing that up front, there's enormous payback in the long run. There's, there's an example that comes to mind a health-based organization that we were working with uh, a couple of years ago. So they came to technology organizations saying they wanted to you know, build an application, a pretty significant health application to roll out to the community to solve some, some pretty significant issues in the health sector. And there was a couple of ideas of applications they, they thought they wanted to build this organization to, to solve a couple of problems, these, these pretty large-scale problems. But we, we helped them apply, you know, design thinking approach to that. So we got, you know, health practitioners into the room. We had their customers, they were member-based organizations, so a lot of their members into this conversation. And we simply are, you know, we st started with that blank page design thinking approach of what are you, as an end customer, as an end health practitioner, you know, what, what do you see as the biggest problem and what could solve that? And what it turned out to be from a couple of days, you know, workshopping and conversation, we found that actually the problem they thought that they, they needed to solve was, was very different. It was 180 degrees. So if they had gone down to building this application, you know, significant investment, they, they might have built something that, that wasn't really going to solve a problem. But by spending a bit of time up front, and I know as, as yourselves do, that they actually were confident and they, it, was, it was genuine that they were actually going to solve one of the industry's you know, more significant problems. So that, for me, changed my whole perception around, you know, in terms of building technology and how it links to the broader business strategy, that if you don't really create that space and time up front, you could be investing in something that's not really going to solve a significant problem. Yes, yeah, so um, we, we've got a similar story to that where we're working with a client, we took them through our dev ready process, mm -hmm. and they knew the outcome, they were, they were solving the right problem, but they'll fix yep. it on solving it in one specific way. Right. And that way that they want to do it, that feature that they were focusing on, blew the project out to like six times their budget. Right. After we presented that back, we said, yep, we advise not to go ahead with this project just because of the costs and what it's involved and yes. you're adding all yep. this extra development for no value. Yes. They then reevaluated their approach, went down another path and won an award for that product. Right. There you go. Yeah. The same yeah, outcome was awesome. going to be delivered in both, but one was going to deliver... It's the same value for yes. six times the cost. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And it's, I think you've touched upon it here. It's, you, we're solving problems. Take technology, put technology aside for a minute because we can all jump into solution mindset pretty quickly. <laughs> it's very easy to do that. Yes. You get carried away with your ideas and I'm testament to that. I'll do that myself. But sometimes you have to take a step back and say, okay, what could we be doing to make sure we're build, building something that people care about, need, evolve? Or should we be building something in the first place? Like, I think the biggest issue we see with in the, in the walks of what we do is people jump into building product way too early. It happens everywhere. I very rarely see people taking the time to invest in market research, talking to their customers. I think one in 10 of people that come to us have probably done the work. Um, right. As have actually invested time and effort into talking to customers, surveying, actually thinking about different models and ways to solve problems, mm -hmm. um, digging into what the problems are, and it's, yeah, it's it, it is putting the brakes on a little bit mm. when people come to us to say, "Do we really need to go through this?" And it's like, "Yeah, we do," <laughs> and if we, and if we yeah. don't, we're probably not the best company to work with. Yeah, we probably want yeah. to work with somebody else because in reality. Think of it this way, you're coming to a tech company to build a product 
And generally the people that come and ask to build a product have no knowledge of product development nor mm -hmm. technology. Uh, I think just take a back seat and just understand that there are limitations in your thinking. There are many ways that we can do things. And in some cases, you probably don't need to build anything. I've seen that many times before. We yes, just plug yeah. something off the shelf and just go ahead and solve mm -hmm. the actual problem for the customer. So mm -hmm. it is a tough conversation to have sometimes. I think it is. Yeah. And do you see, I mean, what we see in that space that you're both so right in terms of actually creating that time up front to have those mm -hmm. conversations, we see that, the successful ways that we've seen it done is is not just having you know the technology department or the digital team in that conversation. It's having mm -hmm. as people as close to the customer or as, as close to the problem as we refer to it as possible. So sales teams, customer teams, account teams. Yes. So when we have those people in those conversations up front, and ideally end customers themselves, we'll we'll come across stuff, won't we? That that we that were blind spots that we we never even saw that could have been even a problem. So I think that that's where it's, and maybe you guys see that as well, that's where we're moving to, as opposed to that more that you know, technology department, you know, running with things. It's making sure, you know, all parts of the business are involved and ideally, you know, all, all customer segments are involved so that we really get a broad view of actually, what are we trying to do here and, and how are we going to better, better the experience? I wrote a, just thinking back to last year, I wrote a bit of an article around this. Mm -hmm. I think um, technology originally, like you said, was an enabler, it was placed in a silo. It yes. was technology to enable the business to run the computers, to run yes. the servers, um, mm -hmm. and that's all it was. But now I think we need to look holistically as technology, as more of a, an innovation to the business strategy, to the business model, to how we can do business and deliver what we're doing, to shifting the way that we think about business and becoming mm -hmm. a part of the business as a whole and not a silo. And I think that leans towards bringing everybody into the conversation. That's bringing your marketing, your sales, your finances, your operations, all together to have a conversation around how we're using technology holistically as a business because it can be a massive enabler and automator if you actually think about it in the right ways and not get bottlenecked down by technology just looking to serve one silo or one particular thing. That's the it's, it's true. Think about. It's true. And a lot of the time we see technology teams, digital teams actually don't have visibility of what the mm. overall business strategy is. So there's really, there's good intent there to try to understand it, but they haven't been given access or they haven't really seen the real the heart of what the business strategy is or they haven't been involved in that process so we really encourage organizations when they're looking at their business-wide strategy to make sure that they've involved you know all those different you know teams from the start so it's not as not as if you know they're, they're lumps either lumped with a here's our business strategy go and deliver it mm -hmm. and then technology teams going hang on we can't that's not possible or there's limitations um, or you know not having visibility at all so I, we see the opportunity is there's still that bit of a gap between, you know, the business and some tech functions. Mm -hmm. And the more that those conversations can be intertwined as a single team, I think the more understanding, you know, the business then gets of technology and, and vice versa, and then the better results we'll see. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a holistic approach, right? It's thinking, I find that interesting that <laughs> technology departments trying to deliver on Technology innovation doesn't have the strategy of the businesses. That's that's pretty scary uh, to think that that's happening in some industries and some businesses. So yeah. Yeah, I think if you take a step back and just say, yeah, technology can he, is here can serve us, can even help us evolve our business and even change our business models completely. If you're willing to um, invest and think from a problem and a customer mm -hmm. perspective, because that will drive the decisions that we make within business. And if you're sitting in within a business or in a startup with an idea, customer first is, is always a great approach because they're the ones with the answers. They're going to tell if they're going to use it or not, or they're the ones that are really have the problems. If you're really going to solve and add value, you need to want to do that pretty early on, not when you've got a product in hand and then find out later on that uh, that product's not going to serve that customer. Yeah, big time. And on that point, Andrew, I think you raise a good point. What we're seeing in, you know, probably the conventional way, not just technology, but broader the way businesses go about strategy and then execution. We see that conventionally, these people look at them as two very separate disciplines. So you've got strategy and then you've got execution. And perhaps normally technology in that is in that more that execution delivery part. Yeah, it would be. 
but we we're actually seeing that those there's a bit of a change, bit of a shift in instead of looking at those two things. So you know, strategy first, doing a review, you know, going and understanding the market. Instead of just doing that discreetly or separately to then executing, like what you've just said there in terms of you know, going and testing things with with customers, we're seeing those disciplines being being really combined. Mm. So you go and speak to your customers, you know, what are their major problems, dig into that problem to make sure it's actually gonna, gonna solve that. And then like like yourselves do, go and go and test some of those prototypes with those customers. So then you're moving into execution, but you're not you haven't locked down your strategy hundred percent. And you're you're using the learning from the execution phase, then directly back into strategy. So, like perhaps you know the continuous delivery approach in you know application builds, we're seeing that similar principle apply to those bigger themes of strategy and execution. Mm-hmm. If organisations are, are looking at them very separately, there can be a bit of a di- disconnect and the and the classic you know finger pointing. Well, we had the right strategy, you didn't execute. We're seeing when when organisations are actually looking at those more of a or more of a single thing as opposed to separate disciplines, we're seeing a better better alignment between actually solving the customer problem, and mm-hmm. then as you said, Andrew, learning from customer feedback. So we might roll out a prototype which we thought was was going to solve a problem, but three months into that, we might get feedback that it's actually not, and there's a, a more pressing problem to solve. So that feeds back into tweaking the strategy which then flows on. So that's something that we're just observing over the last probably 12 months. Those organizations that can look at those things, not as separate functions, but as learning off each other to influence. So execution influences strategy and vice versa. We see a better better outcome in terms of um, serving the customer. Yeah, and that like agile approach to doing that where the technology can sort of inform the strategy based on your prototypes that you're discussing. That's more of like a, a risk mitigation strategy. Yeah, big time. What do you know and what you don't know? Explore that before you've made the decision and make yes. a better decision after the fact. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and no doubt you guys would see that in terms of um, like you talked about actually getting the creating the space at the start to what are we trying to solve here as opposed to rolling things out. I'm I'm sure you've seen that time and time again, the payoff of, of doing it that way. Yeah, because there's like Andrew said before, there's a hundred different ways you can actually deploy technology to solve a problem. Hmm. You don't know what the right one is until it's being used and you evaluate it. Yeah. So if you yeah. can roll out a prototype and test, then you can either save yourself a big headache now uh, in the future by doing that little step now. Yeah, where so the, true. Yeah, where they see that, all right, you're slowing down the process because you're preventing an actual rollout. Mm. But what you could end up saving is the support and maintenance headache that they haven't foreseen yet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Andrew, you mentioned design thinking a couple of times. Take us through what that means for people out there that haven't been abreast of what that means. Explain that to us. Yeah, well, there's, I suppose there's a number of different approaches to design thinking, isn't there? And I know you guys apply the principles yourselves. In my experience, I came across design thinking in a technology sense. So as I mentioned, you know, years ago, perhaps organizations or tech providers were building applications without actually going and, and actually making the time to speak with the customer and customers, you know, having having that real empathy and, and understanding what they're trying to solve before they then go and ideate and then prototype and roll out. So I first saw design thinking in a in a technology sense, and the amazing impact it had if you actually took that approach to actually before building something and actually having empathy, going and digging into what problem we're going to solve. The impact of of that of the success of then what application you're going to build was enormous. So I saw that firsthand in the technology sense. Fast forward to now, we're not design thinking purists in a sense that we follow that you know strict methodology to, to the letter. But we use design thinking principles in the work we do in, in a business strategy context. So we're seeing it, it really helpful in when we're having a conversation with, with a CEO or a leadership team or a board. And perhaps, you know, the only way they've seen strategy in the past is, has been, okay, we as an executive team need to come up with all the good ideas and we need to be able to make the calls for what we're going to invest in in the next 12, 24 months. But we're seeing by bringing the the principle of design thinking into that conversation, we're actually helping you know boards and execs actually become more comfortable to say, hey, it's okay. We actually don't have all the answers, and if we think we do, we're probably we could be investing things that that might not be right. So it's actually we're using those principles to to help those pretty senior people pretty much give themselves permission to go and 
have the conversation with their market, with their business community, with their customers to start with, and to really dig in and have empathy before they then make decisions around what strategy they're going to flow follow. So we see design thinking in that element. We see it's fairly new in the business context. You know, design thinking in the technology and digital world is very prevalent. And we're seeing it really open up mindsets and doors within the business strategy space of allowing people to go and have that blank page conversation first before making any any decisions around their core strategy. And we're seeing there's a, there's a customer last year, we work with a CEO and a board of an education and a health business. And originally, they were going to be starting their strategy around, okay, an offsite, a two-day offsite, a classing offsite, all the ideas and all the, the powwow thinking internally and what they were going to decide on. But we flipped that and we, we helped the CEO and their leadership team go and have a, now we had about probably 40 hours worth of conversation with, with their partners and their customers, literally, you know, using you know, design thinking principles. So their customer, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you hearing out there? A lot of these were on Zoom calls last year, of course. And from those conversations, you know, originally the CEO was a bit uncomfortable saying, we need to have an agenda to have this, you know, it could go off the rails. And it's a bit scary, isn't it, for some, you know, you know business leaders to go and have that because they've normally have the strict agenda. Yeah, or they've they would. Normally, yeah. yeah, or they've normally already agreed as an exec team, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And they're just having, they're doing a survey, a chat to perhaps just yep. validate that. Correct. So so we're seeing through those conversations, there was, it was, a, it was an amazing amount of insights or blind spots that they'd never seen. And that actually then opened up, formed the core of their strategy decisions, which formed their business strategy decisions, the choices they were going to make and what they were going to do and as importantly, what they weren't going to do. And then it influenced, you know, what technology they were going to build um, off the back of those, off the back of that business strategy. So to answer your question in a nutshell, you know, design thinking principles we, we find are really helping execs open up their mindsets to seeing it's okay to have the open conversations to start with, as opposed to thinking they have to have all of the ideas and strategies up front. Yeah, so it's very different once that um like the blinkers come off from having a contained and constrained meeting around a specific yeah. set of bullet points that they have to address rather big, than letting it flow energy. and be actually try and be a bit more creative. Exactly, exactly. And it's, it's surprised even a few of themselves. You know, it was scary for them. So it surprised when, when they created the time, what they actually, the feedback they got from customers. I think the, the word you hit there, Anthony, was creative. Yeah. <laughs> to create, we, can't, it's, uh, we can put itself in a box, but sometimes it's, um, it's good to frame a conversation from nothingness and just ask good questions. And it's all yeah. based on the questions, right? So if you're asking crappy questions, you're going to get crappy answers. So I think yeah, so it's true. all about asking good questions and being aware and a good listener to run those conversations. Otherwise, it becomes can go off the rails um, pretty quickly if it's uh, not run by yeah. um, Limitations right are good because they can create creativity because then you have to figure mm-hmm. out a way around them. Correct. But if it's like you said, that strategic meeting where there's these six bullet points where you just have to gloss over because we've already talked about them and just <laughs> dot the i's and cross the t's yes yeah yeah it's spot yeah. on it's and it's it's probably just done with with good intent isn't it because yeah, some people haven't seen plan it and they want to follow through with it they just need to get the sign off because that's the process exactly exactly most of these things are always done with good intent it's you don't know what you don't know generally in this sort of stuff yes especially yep. like you said with design thinking it's very new in that space because it's not product and customer focused it's not something mm-hmm. that someone's going to end up using yeah Yes, it's, all the time. everyone in your organization will use it, but they're not treating the organization as a product and their employees as the customer. That's right. That's right. Yeah, spot on. In terms of how do you engage that conversation when you, you walk into a new client conversation around strategy? What's the way you approach this? Do you look at case studies behind this, how the results have come about? How do you get the buy in? Because I've had this conversation with a few people that, that talk to this, that lead with research first and data first. And a lot of people, are challenged by that a little bit then customers are challenged by it because they just want to get up and start executing yeah. like, let's execute let's deliver something and it's, yes. how do you find that first conversation around your approach and what's the sort of feedback from customers when, you, when you're pushing them into a new direction they've probably never ever thought about before yeah i think last year with you know the huge change that most people went through last year with all the lockdowns I think that actually opened up people's mindsets and their approaches to to different ways of, of looking at things as well, particularly at that exec level. So I think, you know, there were so many unknowns and so much ambiguity, and there, and there still is this year, of course, that I think, you know, the conversations we had that 
uh, you know, no one could really sit there and say, I've been through this before, or, you know, I've, I've, I've followed this process before, this is what we need to do. So that opened up conversations at that, at that exec level to say, okay, none of us have been through this before. What is the best way that we can actually get a real live read on the market, the economy, our customers, to then make informed decision and choices? And so I think that, to be honest, that opened up a lot of conversations that if organizations went down in the conventional route and said, okay, we're just going to rely on what we think is the, is the best choices and in best investments, well, Either they, they'll change in three months because, you know, things are moving so quickly and things are moving quickly this year as well. So I think the the unknowns and the ambiguity that last year really created, we saw was kind of opened up our people's mindsets to different ways of, of looking at things. And you both talked about, you know, design thinking has been used in, in technology world for so long, but it is, it's pretty new at the, in the business strategy world. So I think people were inherently more open to that, looking at, at different ways and looking for ways to actually navigate through the unknowns. And that's where I, I see, you know, design thinking or human-centered design is so important at that level now going forward, because no one can really say, you know, this is what's going to be happening. Perhaps like previous years, there was more certainty and you've got to have a real constant live read on the market. So what we're seeing is it's encouraging execs to be checking in on their strategy, on their execution continually, not just a okay, we've done our strategy for three years, we're done, it's in the draw. It's really changing the, the approach to, we've got to look at this strategy as living and breathing. We've got to check in at least every, every month with our customers, with our internal teams. What's changed? What's happening? What are, what, what are our customers hearing? What are they feeling and seeing? And then adapting their choices and strategy to match that. And then that's flowing on to technology decisions. So I think inherently just the environment is, is changing things around that. But to, to also answer your question, Andrew, yeah, we, we use specific customer examples and a lot of our customers are you know, happy to speak to other customers to say, by changing from that conventional strategy approach of, you know, we need to have the answers and writing down our three-year plan to then acknowledging that we don't have the answers and we're going to have to go and speak or we want to go and speak to our customer community. You know, we have customers, you know, you know talking to other customers around how that's completely changed their organization from that approach. Yeah, it's interesting being vulnerable can sometimes open up a, a lot of possibilities. So we don't, yeah. we don't have all the answers. And I think if we pretend that we do, that's when we can hit, so we can hit a home run doing that, but we can also hit, you know, miss the ball a few times. And uh, sometimes in this world of business, missing, missing once or twice can put you out of business pretty quickly. So it's always evolving, always changing. And I agree with you. I think last year has, has probably shaken us up a little bit. The amount of uncertainty has probably opened up people's minds to, all right, let's just give something a go. It's, yep. it's probably brought, brought down the barriers a little bit more. And that's brought, that brought up the realisation that we, change is inevitable. It's always happening and it's probably happening faster than it ever has been. I think um, technology has tenfold gone quicker as a result. we are changed the way we worked. I'm still working at home. It's January 2021. I've been working at home I don't know, for eight months now, seven or eight months. Yes. And I, yep. I don't know if I'll ever go back to the way of the way we used to work. And it's yeah, it's good learning sometimes. I think we get shaken up a little bit by change, but sometimes yeah, it is. Uh, it's yeah. And as you say, it's, it's perhaps fast tracked. You know, people mm. having to shift the way they do yeah. things in a good sense, isn't it? So that's always yeah. a good thing. That's always a good thing. It's about finding that balance within it and what that ends up being and what um, where that pendulum swings. I don't think it'll swing back to what it was 12 months ago where we all sat in our office and worked. But no, there, there'll be a balance there. I think you still need um, a bit of time for that person one-on-one -on -one interaction, that group collaboration, but you can do a lot of it online. We've learned we can uh, <laughs> pretty yeah. quickly over the time and a lot of corporates and businesses have all learned this which is changing the way we work and technology has been pivotal to that. I, I was listening to one of my customers speak, we're talking pre-Christmas and he mentioned that their digital transformation, and this is a, a billion dollar business, so quite a large organization, right. the transformation digitally has moved probably three, four years ahead as where well, probably it was end, ended up being and right. they've been able to action projects within three months which normally would have taken three years to get through. Mm. And it's like, yeah, why? It's, why is that it's happening? Now? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty crazy the, the times that we're in. But I think it's probably a good thing. I think. Yeah, I think lost. so. Yeah, it's been a tough 12 months. 
a tough sort of period for everybody. Yeah, I think that there probably might be a bit of a settling period perhaps yes. for the next six months in a good sense. You know, yeah. there's been a, an acceleration of delivering and then a, mm -hmm. now it's checking into has that, how, what has that done? How has it Correct. improved? Proved all sorts of things. So mm -hmm. I think it's a probably a good good chance in the next six months, isn't it, to, to look at how it's how it's actually improved and then to, to tweak those those things. Be a good time to reflect, right? So uh, there's there'll be a bit of that going uh, over the next uh, three to six months, I would imagine. No, no doubt. Now, Andrew, if you were to talk to someone that is in business or walking into business, how would you encourage them to go about one? designing their strategy and two, designing the, the next the product for market. What are some of the three quick steps that, or three or four quick steps you get them to take as, as the beginning point? Yeah, I think it's, I think the first, the starting point is, you know, if we're looking at it, you know, if, if someone was coming to say, we want to build a technology product, it's, it's encouraging them just to, again, as we've talked about, to, okay, just take a bit to put things on pause just for a moment. It doesn't have to be for a huge amount of time. And to actually ask the questions ideally involve the right people in those conversations to say, you know, what are we actually trying to solve here as an overall business? And going a bit beyond that, we're looking at, you know, broader communities. A lot of, a lot of the larger tech companies, perhaps some would argue this, are actually trying to look at, you know, how are they actually trying to serve a broader community and, and societies? And I think, you know, businesses in the past that perhaps more looked at, okay, how, you know, how are we going to improve bottom line? How are we going to survive in that way? But I think now, you know, communities and consumers, us as consumers, we're actually looking at, okay, what is this business actually enabling or bettering in our local community or in our broader uh, community? And how is it actually benefiting society? So the way I see things is that there has to be now a link, more, more of a link than just, you know, growth from a, from a top and bottom line. But it has to be genuinely, how are we as a business actually creating a better community and society? And I think the organisations that are really that are really genuinely tapping into that, and not just for the sake of it, not just to to chalk up on an annual report, but for those that are actually spending the time to actually engage with their community and say, what are we actually? What's the bigger picture here? Uh, not just to solve a, just a specific customer problem, but how are we contributing back to society? And I think, you know, the like the likes of Salesforce, I read I read Mark Benioff's books recently, and and I think. And they as an organisation have done that pretty well. They've, they've looked at you know, who they are trying to serve from an overall community. You look at Microsoft, Satya Nadella, he's doing that in a, in, a, in a huge way around, okay, how are our products and services actually going to benefit society? And then working back from there. And I think that, that changes the whole mindset from just building a product to you know, increase top and bottom line to then how are we going to actually, actually going to benefit society and community? So I think it's probably a funny way to answer it, but I think that is what we're seeing at the heart of if we're starting from that point and then working backwards, it can really bring a, a business to life. It can, it can positively affect the culture of the organisation, you know, the, the staff that are working in that organisation, and, and then customers can see you know, where their dollars are actually going to and how it's bettering a community. So I think that's probably a starting point that most businesses have to really consider genuinely. And then I think secondly, as we've, we've talked about and, and yourself and Anthony have talked about so often, it's about actually you know, spending the time investing with customers. I think customers are, are now wanting to be involved in that process or they are wanting to. The old school days of we have to have a perfect product or service before we roll it out. Customers want to be involved at a really early stage. So they want to see an early prototype of a, an application or a product to be involved with shaping that product. And I think the organizations that are investing the time into bringing their customers and community in at a really early stage, they're actually, their customers are changing from that transaction to more of an overall community. So I see, see businesses that are doing that well, and, and in a genuine sense, it's gonna pay off in the long run, I think. Well, there's nothing better to say about your business, your culture than putting a product out there and asking the, the customer for feedback or putting ideas out there and asking customers for feedback. Or yes. A yeah. customer loves being a part of the creative process. We run a SaaS product as well in the pharmacy space and mm -hmm. we love to engage our customers. They give us the answers. We don't have to guess what the customer might want. They're there. Talk to them. And when you start hearing from multiple customers the same thing, you're probably onto something. That's generally... And they, they, they buy and they feel a part of the journey, a part of the business, a part of the culture. And it feels more like a partnership rather than a transaction, like you said there. So I think it's something to take away anyone that's 
starting out or in business work with the customer. They um they want to be involved with the process. They mm. love to share their ideas. And I think they love to be heard of just asking questions and yeah, just knowing that their opinion matters is um, important to anyone, let alone a customer, right? You everyone wants their opinion heard. Even if you don't use all of it, I think there's something you can take away from every conversation really. And really yeah, you should want to have them involved if you're developing a product or a service for mm-hmm. them. Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. comes back to that basic human principle. As you said, you know, we want to be heard. And Anthony, as, as you mentioned, you know, people want to be, you know, have some form of cre- creativity. And by mm-hmm. involving them, it, it opens up those doors, doesn't it? It does. It's yeah, just like a very crude example. You don't go to a builder and he just builds your house after saying hello to you and <laughs> finds out what you want. <laughs> yep, that's right. Yes. That's right. Yep. Not perfect, Andrew. I oh, really appreciate the conversation. We're talking a little bit about strategy and design thinking and how people might use some of the sort of thinking around just business strategy, not just within technology and delivering product. I think there's there's plenty to be had there, plenty of thinking for people to take away from this conversation. So Andrew, how can people find out about yourself if they want to reach out? Yeah, well well thanks. Thanks for having me on, Andrew and Anthony. It's been it's been great to kick off the year with it with a chat and a thought provoking chat. It's helped me kind of, you know, look at some some things that perhaps, you know, blind spot as well. So help so thanks for um, having me on. In terms of contacts, yeah, the, I mean, the best is is our, our website, foundstone.co. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty straightforward. Or I'm, I'm on LinkedIn fairly regularly. So Andrew Bird, Foundstone Advisory. Just Google that. It'll come up. So they're probably the best best ways to get in touch. Yeah, I'm we'll put those links in the show notes when we release this episode. Great. Cheers for that. Perfect, Perfect. Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, like and subscribe and reach out to Andrew if you're looking for some strategy um, and thinking from a different perspective. So from a design thinking perspective, I think that's a, a great exercise for any business to go through. So thanks again, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.